Hey guys, thanks for tuning in our video. Welcome to 2024. This is my first video of the new year, so I'm super excited and I plan on being very consistent this year. Um, I plan on doing at least two videos a month. We'd like to do one every week, but I just want to build two videos a month. Um, this first one is going to be fairly quick. Um, as I look to improve on my skills as being a developer going into 2024, I am really big on reading. And so I wanted to actually share with you guys the five books that I'm going to actually be reading that are tech related for um, this year. You may read some other ones, but I plan on doing some other reading not related to tech. But these are the five that I'm going to be doing. Quick disclaimer, one or two of these books I've actually already started reading at the end of last year. Um, so they're also going to be in here. Um, and then some of these I haven't started at all. So if you're new to this channel, I used to be a real estate agent and I transitioned into tech in 2023. Um, I did it in about nine, 10 months, self-taught, no boot camp. And um, I'm just sharing my experience, my journey, and what I learned and any resources with you guys um, on this channel. So if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe. So to the video, the first book is going to be called Effective TypeScript, 62 Ways to Improve Your, your TypeScript. Um, I think, yeah, 62 Ways to Improve Your TypeScript. Um, this is a Riley book. It's created, it was written by, um, let's see, Dan Vanderkam. I'm honestly not good with names. I don't really plan to remember all the names of the book. But this book is great. It's not that long, maybe two, I think it's 234, 264 pages. I think I have like 20 pages left. And it's literally like every two, three pages is a way to improve your TypeScript. Whether this is a tip, whether this is something you don't want to know, like some advanced way to do something, or maybe it discredits a way that people tend to use TypeScript and tells you a better way to do it. Um, one thing they talked about is making sure not to retype your comments. So TypeScript, that's the whole point of it. And if you do your function definitions right, um, that is already good documentation. People tend to add comments above them explaining, using JS docs to explain the types, which sometimes can be counterintuitive because with TypeScript you will, um, as you update your code, um, that is updating some form of documentation, but people may forget to update the comments above them. So you, the types in the, those comments may be outdated. So it kind of talks about not doing that, but it also does talk about providing documentation for API related uh, methods. For, for instance, if you're creating some type of library package and there's some type of functions that will be exposed to others to use, you might want to use TS docs for that. Um, so there's, there's things like that that are really cool. I didn't know there's conditional types that you can do where it's like you're using a generic and then you can return key extends string and use a, a ternary type to kind of have conditional types um, where it could be a string or it could be an integer returned. Um, there's there's so many cool things in here um, that I think if you just read, you know, four or five pages a day of this, you'll really improve your TypeScript if you're using it. I highly recommend if you're not using TypeScript and you're in the JavaScript ecosystem to use it, and I'll probably do another video for that later. The next book I want to talk about is The Command Line by William Shots. It's a complete introduction. It's a big book. Um, tech, most tech books tend to be a big book. Um, I don't know the brand of these books, but you see them all the time in Barnes & Noble. They have various different uh, tech-related tech books. Um, but this book is really good if you are, honestly, I think every developer should read this book. It goes over Unix and Linux, um, Linux specifically, but it does touch about Unix a little bit. But it, it, it overall, it goes really deep into the Linux operating system, or really the Linux kernel. Um, it goes into a huge family of operating systems that are based off of Linux. It goes into things like Vim, um, goes into how to write bash scripts. It goes into how to navigate your, your computer, your, your terminal, using your terminal and navigate through your system, figure out what processes are running, close processes. Um, so many things that I think, um, even if you might be a Windows developer, even if you might use Mac, and Mac uses uh, Mac OS, which is based off of Unix, so a lot of things can translate over, but um, this is still, I think, a core book that everybody should read. It's pretty hefty. I actually started reading this, I think I have halfway through it, and it is a really good book. I think everybody should read this. It's kind of expensive. I think it's like $40, but you can get it used um, in a 
20s, and sometimes you can even find them in the lab, right? This next book is called Designing Data Intensive Applications. It's an O'Reilly book. They have a bunch of these for anything tech related. This one's written by Martin Klempman. Um, this book is a beast. I've honestly had to kind of read it a little bit, pull away, read a little bit, pull away, because it's a really big book. Um, and it's very, uh, it's very informational. It's probably not gonna be entertaining, but I think it's a key book. Um, it goes into pretty much there's all the different types of how, how important data is um, in tech. And it talks about how we, um, sorry for so much fall apart. Um, it talks about how important data is and specifically using certain database technologies. And it goes over not only how to decide which database you should use in database technologies, but it goes into the history of old ancient types of technology databases that you'll probably never use, probably never talk about. It goes into different types of databases at a lower level that some of these are based, the ones that you're used to are based off of and talks about how they operate, how they're working under the hood that we usually take for granted that we don't care about. We just say, hey, let me use MongoDB. Hey, I'm gonna write some SQL um, and use Postgres. Like we, we learn all these different standard databases, but we don't really know how they're working under the hood and how the people that may be Netflix or another company uses these databases, how you should use these technologies, how why you should use them over the other. So, and how to design your, your systems, your architectures for your software to be data driven and to really, really look into how you make these decisions other than just saying everybody on YouTube is using MongoDB, it's easy to set up. Um, that may work for most people, but why are you making that decision other than because the YouTube influencer told you? So uh, this is a really hard book to read for me personally. Um, it, you know, it can be kind of boring sometimes, but I think it's something that we should all read at least once just to kind of understand what things, what are going on under the hood. This next book I'm really excited about is called, um, it's written, I guess Sam's is a company or it's the publisher. Sam's Teach Yourself SQL in 24 Hours. Um, I'm really excited, one, because I got cheap, I got it for four ninety nine. even mm -hmm. though it's a hefty book. I think it's kind of an older book, but um, I got it at like a thrift shop, so I'm super excited because it would have probably been a lot more. Um, and it really just, it's, in my old job, we, we used MongoDB and we kind of touched the surface SQL. In my new job, we are only non-relational databases use. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't say what we use, but we use a lot of non-relational databases. And, um, oh, sorry, we, so this next book, I'm super excited to read. One, because it's 4 dollars it's probably more expensive online, but I got it at a thrift shop. So a pretty big book, but I'm super excited because my old job, we use MongoDB and use non-relational databases. And we kind of started looking into a little uh, SQL, um, but not much. And we use the ORM. My new job is actually very common for me to write like flat out queries or to look through the database and query through like PG admin or something to get information I need. So, I really wanted to improve on it. I don't think it's something I'd be crazy good at, but I really think every developer should know how to work with both non-relational and relational databases. And this book is very, in, I'm intrigued because it's 24 hours, but it's not a day. It's 24 lessons that you can do in an hour or less. Each one has a quiz, quizzes and chat, I don't know, uh, like a test at the end. There's code examples in there. And there's even this little, um, I saw the day, this little cheat sheet in the front that has all the key commands that you need. So if, and it, it has like this little tail. So if you want to just rip these out and get the key ones that you want, you can. But I'm um, super excited to read this book. So you don't necessarily have to read this book, but I think you should read a book on relational databases to get on your SQL game. This last book is Cracking the Coding Interview by Dale McDowell. Um, I, you, if you look up books to read in tech, you'll probably see this book. Um, it's pretty much, she used to work for a lot of cleaning companies, Google, Microsoft, and I think Apple, 
and she interviewed hundreds of people, performed several interviews. Um, and this whole book goes over everything that you can, you know, maybe you're moving into a startup, you're looking for a small startup, you might not run into this. A lot of companies want you to do several interviews, coding interviews, practice algorithms, data structures, and this book is heavy on it. There's 189 actual uh, problems that you could probably run into. These are not like fake questions. They show you one, not only how to solve them, but how to break, um, or teaches you how to break down these type of hard problems into small pieces, how to answer the questions, and you should get better algorithms in these type of interviews. It also goes into the behavior questions, what they're looking for. Again, the author did interviews for a long time, so she's giving me, you an insight on how to pass these type of these interviews. Um, I think whether you're looking for a job or not, this would be good because there's 189 algorithms in there, so they're easy all the way up to really hard one. So I think this is going to be really good. It goes into data structures, um, and it also has a short bit about how these major bank companies that are interested in joining one of those, how they conduct interviews. So I think it's a really good book. It's pretty big. Um, it's also probably a $34 book, but I plan on reading this as well. I love my job. I don't plan on leaving, but I do want to make sure that I am prepared to do these type of these uh, questions as well as I think it would be better for me to grow on those type of skills as well. So yeah, those are the five books that I will be reading that are tech related and I think I will be a much better developer at the end of the year by reading these books. Um, I think you should try to look into these books or similar books. If you have any other recommendations, drop them below. I love books. I'm on Goodreads um, and I like to track what I'm reading. So if you have any suggestions, put them down by to my want to read list. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one.